Welcome back, friends, to the place where we rise with the Lord, where we rely upon His Holy Word each and every day of our lives. I'm Motorcycle Pastor, and I would like to invite you to open up to 1 Kings, the 22nd chapter. There we read, Jehoshaphat made ships of Tarshish to go to Ophir for gold, but they did not go, for the ships were wrecked at Ezion Geber. We use Charles Spurgeon's Morning by Morning to get into God's Holy Word, and here's what Charles writes. Solomon's ships had returned in safety, but Jehoshaphat's vessels never reached the land of gold. Providence prospers one and frustrates the desires of another, in the same business and at the same spot. Yet the great ruler is as good and wise at one time as another. May we have grace today in the remembrance of this text to bless the Lord for ships broken at Ezion Geber as well as for vessels filled with temporal blessings. Let us not envy the more successful, nor murmur at our losses as though we were singularly and specially tried. Like Jehoshaphat, we may be precious in the Lord's sight although our schemes end in disappointment. The secret cause of Jehoshaphat's loss is well worthy of notice, for it is the root of very much of the suffering of the Lord's people. It was his alliance with a sinful family, his fellowship with sinners. In 2 Chronicles 20, 37, we are told that the Lord sent a prophet to declare because you have joined with Ahaziah, the Lord will destroy what you have made. This was a fatherly chastisement, which appears to have been considered blessed to him. From the verse which succeeds our morning's text, we find him refusing to allow his servants to sail in the same vessels with those of the wicked king. Would to God that Jehoshaphat's experience might be a warning to the rest of the Lord's people to avoid being unequally yoked together with unbelievers. A life of misery is usually the lot of those who are united in marriage or in another way of their own choosing with the men of the world. Oh, for such love to Jesus that, like him, we may be holy, we may be harmless, undefiled and separate from sinners, for if that is not the case with us, we may expect to hear it often said, the Lord will destroy what you have made. Those are hard words and often misinterpreted. I say this because I want to reiterate to you with scripture showing you how Jesus not only came to a world filled with sinners, but that Jesus dined with them and instructed his apostles in both going to the Jews who were in a sinful state and rejected him, as well as going to the Gentiles who lived an entire life filled with unholiness. And yet God shows up giving grace. So what is the difference here? Spurgeon's first word was fellowship. Perhaps it's the difference of about 150 years or so. But we all often think today of fellowship slightly differently. We don't think of the intimacies as much as we do of togetherness. See, the Bible isn't advocating not to be with these people. The best word choice is the one that Spurgeon ends with. Are you in unity with them? Are you of one mind with them? Are you of one purpose and one goal with sinners? In fact, let's drop the end of that and just say, are you in unity with one mind and one goal with sin? See, that's where the true rub comes in. Because often, to use that word, those we hang out with rub off on us. It is the hope 
It is the prayer, and I believe it is the meta narrative of God coming to be with us that His holiness will cleanse us, or to use that modern vernacular that I just used, rub off on us. It is the hope that we will be present with others, but that we will not be united with sinners, that we will instead dine with them, share the Lord with them, that they might see the light, that they might see a difference, that they might be overcome by the Holy Spirit who we carry in our hearts and desire to change their lives. I encourage you, brothers and sisters, to continue going deep into God's holy word. Know it so that even when somebody says something that you think that's a little off, you might hear where they're in God's word and perhaps amplify it with your own voice as you share God with the world and with one another. Be not unified with the world, but be unified with God's holy word, Jesus, incarnated in flesh, the word. Know it, live it, share it with all the world, for in truth, we need to hear it and hear it often. God bless you, brothers and sisters. This is Motorcycle Pastor. Looking forward to seeing you in the evening.